here. Job chapter 32, and I want to read verse number 7. Then I'm going to flip over to the book of Luke chapter 15 and, and just say some things. I may have preached this here before, I don't know, but this is what I got on my heart. Job chapter 32, verse 7. Job said, uh, I said, days should speak, and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. Here he's talking about the days of our lives or to speak to us in order to say some things. The past days, the present days, the future days are coming or to speak to our heart and speak to our life. And, and uh, I want to preach on days that speak to us. Days that uh, speak to us. I, I looked the word up, the definition of a day, it just means the part of 24 hours when it is light space of time between the rising and the setting of the sun. That's what the dictionary says about it. And uh, there's days in our country that starts at different times. Uh, in the Babylonian area, it starts at sunrise. And uh, in the Jewish days, it starts at sunset. And then you come to the Egyptian days, it starts in the midday. And uh, here in America, it starts at midnight. So Days come at different times, different times of day. When I get to Montana, we're three hours behind y'all, so don't be calling me in the middle of the night, amen. But anyway, uh, there's civil days. That's days of legal days that we set aside, special days, certain days that we have, you know, talk about special holidays and, and uh, days that this happened, days that happened, and military days. There's all kinds of days that we accomplish in our life. Most of us like our birthdays until we get older, amen. And, uh, you know, like young ladies, they're all excited about the birthday until they get over 25, and then they don't want to tell you no more. But there's days, all kinds of days in our life, birthdays, anniversaries, and graduation days, all kinds of days that we're born, or kids' days that they're born. We remember all those days, and days, uh, days speaks to us of special happenings in our life. Sometimes we can go back, and I, I, I have a bad habit of this. So if you get me started, I'll start talking to you about days that happened. This happened back then, and this happened back there. There's days that we remember, special days that happened in our life. Days I, just like Brother Rock's talking about, the day you got saved, man. Who, who wouldn't want to talk about that? The day you got saved, the day God called me to preach, and the day we got married, and the days that our baby was born, and, and all those days, and days of revival, things that happened and back in the days. I got on that the other night about uh, things of revival we used to have. We, we don't have revivals like we used to have back in, in those days. Those was good days of those revivals. I remember, I remember, Brother Doug, when we had revival, and we went and preached revivals. We didn't have motel. We just stayed at the church house and slept on cots in the basement of the church and, and uh, didn't have nowhere to go, didn't have no money to go anyway. And we just laid around the church all day long, and we'd pray and preach. We didn't have to have certain motels, didn't have to eat at a certain place, and they didn't have to guarantee us nothing. We just went, and we'd lay around and preach us right around all day and pray and pray and, and, and seek the Lord. And guess what? Revival would come and break out. Amen. And now we got to have everything in the world. we got all kinds of things going on, and uh, we're in a whole different day. Amen. That we was in that day. I, I said this the other night. I said, used to, used to, we shepherd the sheep. Now we entertain the goats, amen. But, but uh, we're in a different day in our world. And, and, uh, but there are some days that I want to talk about uh, that speaks to us. I thought about, first of all, yesterday speaks to us. Yesterday speaks to us. Yesterday says, I'm gone but learn from me. Amen. I'm gone. You, you know, yesterday, there's no way to go back to yesterday. Now, I, I've got notes that I, I don't usually preach on notes like this, but there's no way you can go back to yesterday and straighten it out. Amen. Uh, our mistakes and our problems that we went through, some unsolved problems that we even had in our past, uh, we cannot go to it. Amen. See the sign of the day. It said, don't let a bad yesterday mess up a good two day. Amen. And, but sometimes, you know, it just says, let it go. And yesterday is the days of an unreachable past. It's gone.
gone forever. Uh, there's a lot of people that lives in yesterday. They live in problems that they had years ago. Amen. They live in circumstances that, and a lot of people they even they even miss out on the will of God and the things of God because the, all they can do is hold on to their past. And well, you don't know what kind of past I had. Uh, you don't know what happened back yonder. Uh, well, I'm glad. Thank God, Jesus done washed that away. Done forget about all that past. But yesterday's, uh, my friend, is something that we ought to learn from. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, when you take about that prodigal son, when he came to himself, uh, when he came to himself, uh, he said that, uh, he said, I have, uh, I have sinned. Uh, he was talking about his past days. Uh, he said, I have sinned. Uh, and my friend, it speaks to us. And yesterday, my friend, it should be uh, relieved that we should learn from it. Uh, there are some things in our past we ought to forget. <laughs> Amen. There's some things in yesterday I want to forget. I know in our mind, Brother Sidney, there, there's a lot of things we can't forget. Uh, but I tell you what, we ought to push it aside. Paul said, forgetting those things are behind. Uh, and if you ain't careful, you'll let your yesterdays bind you down. Uh, you'll let your yesterdays and you'll be carrying them like a weight on your back. Uh, my friend, I, I've seen people and pastored people and they'll say, well, I would serve God. I would do something, preacher. But I, back in the day, I had this problem or that problem. But well, you know what? Just let it go. God done got over it. God done forgave you for it. You ask me why I'm happy, my sins is gone. Amen. Couldn't change yesterday if I went back. Amen. And so there's a lot of things. I remember Dr. Sattler years ago was in a meeting in Texas together. And I've told this before, but Dr. Sattler got up and breathed. He said, I can imagine. He pastored in Greenville, South Carolina. He said, I can imagine in Greenville, South Carolina, the biggest drunk, the biggest drunk, uh, my friend, gets saved, gets born again. Biggest drunk in Greenville. Uh, he said, I can see him later on. He dies and goes to heaven. And said, he looked at the Lord and said, Lord, I was the biggest drunk in Greenville. Uh, said, God would say, was you? Amen. Uh, you know why God forgets about all that? And the best thing you can do is forget about your past. Uh, you watch me why I'm happy they're gone. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, there's a lot of things in our past that we need to let go. I had to learn some things about that. To let something go that haunts us. Uh, and my friend, our yesterday Today is something we ought to stand for. Amen. Somebody's talking about our raising. The brother's talking about our raising and all that. I'll tell you, there's some things in your past you better not let go. Uh, my friend, you better learn from it. You train up a child in a way it's a go. There's a lot of things in my past. Uh, my, I, I was like the brother back here with church nine months before I was born. Been in church all my life. I don't even know what it is to be out of church. Uh, and my friend, but you know, I've learned from the fact that you've got to have the church. Uh, and you've got to have the Word of God. You've got to have prayer. Now, there's a lot of things you've got to do that's just uprightness. Amen. Nothing wrong with living right and dressing right and talking right, spitting white and just right. My friend, learn some things if you pay that's just right. Yeah. You know, our, our generation today, they, they forgot about some things. I was amazed when he talked about that old man took his head off. My friend, you know, we, young folks today, they just leave their zone. Amen. You ever seen a day where there weren't so many hoodies anyway? I don't know what's wrong with these kids. Got hoodies all over their head, and they're just peeking out like that, you know. And my friend, listen, uh, my friend, we're in a scary world, amen. Uh, I want to wonder what's under that hoodie, amen. Uh, uh, my friend, but listen, there was a day of respect. Uh, and my friend, I don't want to lose that respect uh, that we used to have. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. There was a day that we had more respect for the house of God uh, than we do now. Uh, yes, years ago, yesterday, uh, my friend, when you come to the house of God, my friend, you came in. It was a place of reverence. Uh, my friend, I remember just running a little bit. My daddy, uh, my, he'd take me back to Sunday school and run, wear me out. Uh, all I'd done was just run down the aisle a little bit. Uh, I mean, he said, boy, you're in the house of God. Uh, and my friend, we've lost that respect for the house of God. we lost that respect for God. We've lost that respect for decency. Uh, my daddy, my friend, he taught us when you go to the house of God, my friend, go first class. Go dress up and go like, man, we're in a sloppy job. I don't know why I'm preaching on this. We're in a sloppy generation today. No respect for the house of God. Amen. My friend, but yet we've lost all those things. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what, we had more God when that was going on uh, than we got now. Amen. Uh, my friend, we had more realness. Uh, my friend, we had more of my, my friend, less homes divorcing. Uh, and we had less kids messing up uh, in their lives. Uh, my friend, when we look back to yesterday and we just believe God, we worship God, we didn't have to have everything. Every little gadget and gadget. Uh, we didn't have to have everything, little program going on. Uh, we didn't have to have everything, kitchen convention. Uh, 
My friend, we didn't have to have everything going on in the world. My friend, we just went to church and preached and prayed and the power of the Holy Ghost come and people got saved, got born again. My friend, I'm about sick of all this new fangled stuff in you. My friend, we ought to learn from yesterday. It worked. It worked. My friend, listen, our generation now, they don't know much. <laughs> Amen. Go to McDonald's and my friend, if the power goes out, they can't even count your change. Amen. Uh, they, they, they don't even write cursive no more. All that stuff messed up. Uh, my friend, but I'm glad I was raised, my friend. I'm glad I learned my ABCs. Uh, I'm glad I learned how to ride. I'm glad I learned how to work. Uh, I'm glad, thank God I learned how to read the Bible. I'm thank God I learned how to depend on God. Uh, and my friend, trust the Lord. Uh, yesterday, I raised it in our training. My friend, I was raised when somebody already you comes up. Just stand up. Yes. Raise that way. Huh? Now for yesterday speaks to us. Some things we ought to stand for. Some things we ought to celebrate. Yeah. Boy, there's some yesterdays that we ought to celebrate in our lives. Amen. Somebody asked me the other day, I was in a meeting, and his mother, Brother Doug used to do this, and, and uh, I don't know why I, I, I get involved in this, but Brother Doug used to tell them we're going to uh, wherever rest of would go to, and Brother Mike's going to tell tales. And, and then, you know, all of us go over there, and they'd have me telling tales, and they'd say, tell so-and-so. I said, I told that last time. Well, they didn't hear it. And you know what? I was rejoicing in days of yesterday, yeah, days of revival, days when God done something. Uh, my friend, days when the church moved. Uh, and my friend, was, was, and, and so days of yesterday, he ought to speak to us. Uh, my friend, he said, listen, he said, I have said, he was looking back to his yesterdays. Uh, he was looking back and he said, man, I made a mess. I left the Father's house. Uh, I messed up. Uh, and he's looking back, but he said, I'm going to learn from it. Uh, he came to himself. He said, I don't want what I had yesterday. And so yesterday is days, my friend. He says, "I'm gone, but learn from me." So I thought about the. I thought about not only the yesterday, but I thought about today. <laughs> today says, "I'm at your service. Take advantage of me," <laughs> because it'll soon be a yesterday. Amen. Take advantage of me. Yeah. My friend Isaiah says, Come now and let us reason together. Hebrews says, Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day at hand. Yeah. My friend, some people can't enjoy today for worrying about yesterday or worrying about tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Hey, worried about uh, my wife. We're going on that uh, that trip, and uh, I wasn't going to say nothing. Brother Doug brought that up. Uh, that preacher, that missionary called me. He said, Brother Mike can't get nobody to come. Uh, he said, I can't get nobody to come and preach out here. It's too far. And uh, and I said, Well, when you got it? When you want me to come? Uh, and he said, I, I, When can you come? And I told him. And I got a meeting there, and two meetings in South Dakota, and another two other mission works. And and I told him, I said, I'll be there. I'll come. And my friend, that was a few months ago. Uh, and Brother, Brother Rocky, about a month or two ago. Kay got all hopped up. She said, you know, we got that trip coming up. And we got this, we got this. And I told her, I said, listen, my friend, it's a month and a half before we leave out. I said, I may be dead and can't even go. And I don't want you worried about all this. I don't want to hear about, my friend, what's going to happen in a month and a half. Let's just enjoy today, my friend, and enjoy what God has done for us today and blessed us today. Take advantage of our day, the day that we live in. Amen. Today speaks. You Use me while you can. I'll soon be gone. Yeah. That prodigal son, that prodigal son, he said, not only ha I have, but if you'll notice him, he said, I will right. arise. That was a today decision. I will arise and go to my father and say, I have sinned. Today is a day that we ought to use wisely. Yeah. Amen. You know, sometimes we say, well, I'll do that tomorrow. Huh? Come on, some of you ladies are saying amen right there. Your husband's been saying he'd do it tomorrow for five months. Amen. Tomorrow, tomorrow. It seems like tomorrow never comes. Amen. And my friend, we put things off tomorrow. But I tell you what, today is today. We're to use today wisely. You're to witness today while you can. You may not have a chance tomorrow. Amen. You're to pray today because you might not have a chance tomorrow. Amen. The Doug mentioned my health. I have do have some health problems. Got a little bit of worse, but I'm okay. Uh, I don't complain about it. But I know, Brother Rocky, there's going to come a day. Brother Doug, I may not can make this trip up here. You may have to come haul me up here. And I know those days. So somebody said, Preacher, my sister, she's on me all the time. She said, Why do you keep on going? You're going to kill yourself. I, I said, Well, are you, you threaten me with death? I said, Man, that'd be great. Just to go on to heaven. Wouldn't it die? Had a preacher this week 
died preaching in the pulpit. I thought, man, I got sick and they hauled him out. He got sick, died the next day, but he was preaching. I thought, man, I just want to go. I want to preach and I want to do everything I can. I want to go, brother, help brother Rocky. I want to do everything I can. Why's today? Because tomorrow I may not can go and do what I go. Y'all take advantage of today. Live for God today. Serve God today. Be faithful today. Give today. Tomorrow may never come. Amen. You don't know. Today's the day of new decisions. Huh? Got some bad news coming up the road. I'm not going to mention that. I got some bad news coming up the road. Kay told me when I got had a church last night and got a truck. She said, call me just as soon as you get in the truck. I called her and had a little bad news coming up the road. And, uh, and, and, and boy, the devil jumped on my back about, about some things. And, and, and the Holy Ghost said, speak to my heart, Brother Rocky. And the devil was fighting. The Holy Ghost was talking. And you know what? I made a new decision. I made a new decision that I'm not going to let me get me down. I'm just going to love anyway. I'm just going to show compassion anyway. I'm just going to be there anyway. And a certain situation that happened in our life. I tell you, I made a new decision last night. I'm not going to throw people away. I'm not, my friend, going to put nobody down. I'm going to try to be a lifter. I tell you, today's the day you're going to make some new decisions in your life that you're going to live for God and serve God and be faithful to God. Quit fooling around. Quit being up and down, in and out. Just make your mind up today for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. I didn't feel like preaching but I feel better right now amen, amen. I'm telling you today is the day that we ought to make new decisions today is the day we ought to make new determinations amen. we're determined I'm about sick of this people in and out and up and down <laughs> amen I'm about sick of this, this, this these people everything's about them amen everything's about them don't you do it? I don't want to get on all that. Don't, don't you hate all this selfish stuff? Yes. Everybody, well, I'm over here. Who cares where you're at? Amen. Uh, just make you a picture, put them out of them. You and your family have a good time. You don't have the whole world don't know where you're at. Amen. Come on now. <laughs> Ain't none of them. I don't ever see nobody putting a selfie on in the church in the church parking lot saying, I'm here at the house of God, ready to worship God. All they got doing, they got to go to the beach or go to the mountains or stand on their head or turn the flip and get a picture and send it to everybody. Who cares? Let's know you're serving God and worshiping God. Oh, I, I need to get off of that. Amen. But yesterday speaks to us. Yesterday says, I'm gone. I'm gone. But learn from me. Learn from me. Boy, ain't nothing I, I like any better. I, 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 when I was a young preacher, when I was a young preacher, it's been a long time ago, but I had some preachers, Brother Doug. I had some preachers that uh, they took me kind of under their wing. This little 16-year-old boy. I'd go to these preachers' meetings. And I remember old Brother Cape and Brother Hogan and them, them boys. And they'd come around, Brother Rocky, and hug my neck. They'd say, what have you been studying? What are you studying on? And I'd say, I'm studying on so-and-so. And I'd say, let me show you what I, what I failed. Them preachers probably found it 20 years ago, but I just got it. <laughs> and I said, look here, what I found. Hello, I don't even know Brother Cape now. Oh, Brother Brother Cape, he's full. Oh, Brother Mike, that's wonderful. Man, that's good. Let me write that down. I will write that down. And he'd get a piece of paper and even write it down. I learned later he'd not know all that stuff, but you know what? He never got on me. And so I, I got to thinking one day, Brother Doug, I, I got to thinking several years ago how them old preachers helped me. And I said, God, I learned a lot yesterday from him. Oh, God, help me to be that kind of preacher. Help me, my friend, to find these little young preachers and let them know that somebody cares. Help me, Lord, to find these little old preachers that's got some old lost small church somewhere. My friend, help me to be the one that's willing to go and go in there and just preach like there's a thousand. I, I'll tell you what. I want to be the kind of preacher I said I'm determined I'm determined today and yesterday and tomorrow thank God I want to live for God and serve God and be faithful to God and encourage those and lift them up I'm tired people pushing everybody down Amen. yesterday today today is the day we need to make some new decisions today is a day of new dreams <laughs> amen my sister told me the other day, she said, well, when you going to quit dreaming? I said, when I die. <laughs> Amen. My wife told me the other day, she said, you can come up with more ideas than anybody I've seen in my life. 
uh, she said, you can come up. And you know, I got everything in the world. You wouldn't believe what I was going in his head. Amen. Uh, my friend, I got everything in the world. I've been wanting to write a book. been wanting to put out lines out. I've been wanting to do all this stuff. i got all this stuff going on in my head. And it seemed like you ain't got time for nothing. Amen. But you got dreams. You got hopes. Things that you could do. Things you could work for. I tell you, today is a day to make new dreams and new starts in your life. Huh? Come on now. It's a day that Mother God has given another day. God has given us. Huh? Boy, ain't it wonderful? Ain't it wonderful to wake up with the Lord in the morning? <laughs> I woke up sometime. I wake up. Brother Mike, I just wake up. I know I'm crazy. I wake up in the morning. And I just say, good morning, Lord. <laughs> I do that. I say, and sometimes Kay, she, I get up early and she sleeps a little later than I do. I got up in the morning. I said, good morning, Lord. Kay said, what you say? I said, shut up. I'm talking to you. Amen. <laughs> just, just go back to sleep. And after a while she got up, she said, who's you talking to? Did somebody call? I said, yeah, the Lord called. <laughs> got up one morning. I said, good morning, Lord. It's just like the Lord turned around and said, morning. <laughs> <laughs> man, I took off my study, man. I got in my study, grabbed my Bible. Guess what? Next thing I know, man, he was a saying good morning. I, I, and I'm going to tell you, I said, gave him new determination, a fresh start. If you got problems, if you messed up, it's a day. It's a day. It's a day to make a fresh start. He said, I will. I will. Right today, I'm going out of home, pit. I'm tired of this slob. I'm tired. Today, today, I'm going to make a a new start and he did and God changed his life the day is the day you ought to make a new start in your life today's the day why won't you put it off we sit around well we'll work all these circumstances out. sometimes you make that choice and God works it out I remember I remember when I was talking about leaving the church up there I didn't really tell nobody and God I didn't even tell Kay and I wrestled that thing for about a year I wrestled about a year. I never will forget this, but Doug, you don't even know this, but Doug, you and Rock. I wrestled that thing about a year, or to leave, not to leave. You know, I, I want to be in the will of God. I don't want to miss it. And I know y'all think we're spiritual and we're supposed to just know everything like that, but I know sometimes we're like you. We just argue and fight and fuss and for God. I never will forget I was wrestling that. And I said, God, you're going to have to let me know. I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I had in my mind, I had in my mind what, what I wanted to do. And, but I just couldn't get peace about it. And I thought, you know, and then, you know me. You know, you probably don't know me. I don't ask for nothing. I don't, I just, if I can get by without anything, that's fine with me. And, and I like to ease in, ease out. Don't bother me a bit. But I, I kept thinking, I had two things in mind, Brother Doug. I had two things in mind. I got it one day. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. I, I, I know, I know, I know you want me to leave. And I know what you want me to do. But you're going to have to help me and give me some assurance. And Brother Doug called me and we were talking. He said, Brother Mike, I just want to let you know. He said, if you ever leave that church and go to evangelism, we'd sure like to have evangelists out of our church. And, and I thought, Lord, did you talk to him this morning? Amen. And I thought, wow, well, that's what I was looking for. And, and then Brother Rocky called. And, and I was talking to him. And he said, Brother Mike, oh, we, we look so good to have you over here represent us and work with us. And I thought, my goodness. You know what happened? That all happened one day. And God just opened that up. Well, I look back and thank God for that yesterday. And I thank God I made that decision that day. And thank Thank God I'm going to have the time in the future and plan on running away. Brother Rocky, if you get rid of me, you're going to have to shoot me. Amen. Uh, because that brother had to, uh, somebody said, how long are you going to stay up at Brother Doug's? Uh, I said, from now till Jesus comes. Uh, I said, God done it. God said it. And God is on it. I'll tell you today, sometimes today, that day, today, you'll make a decision that will change your life. Amen. I remember, remember Brother Bobby talking to me one time about something and we was talking he had some things struggles and going on his mind and old Brother Bobby you remember this Brother Bobby we were sitting there looking across the table face to face and Brother Bobby was uh, talking about some things and I looked at him and I said a few things uh, and Brother Rocky just like a light bulb went off in his head uh, I mean you could just say it uh, it's just like his face lit up uh, and he turned around to say it and he said that's it uh, and my friend you know what he told me later he said Brother Mike you don't know it uh, but he said you made two statements and it 
changed my whole world. It changed my whole life. I'm going to tell you today, today is the day. You're going to listen to God. Listen to the Holy Ghost. He can change your life. If you're lost, he can save you. If you're saved, he can put you to work. He can change your life. Today is the day. I feel that you're going to take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. How many opportunities we missed out because we didn't do it today? Amen. Just didn't do it today. Huh? And and then I, I thought about not only not only today says I'm here, says I'm gone, but learn from me and, and today, today says I, I'm at your service. And then I thought about tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day that speaks to us. It says, I'm ahead of you. Prepare for me. Get ready for me. I'm a coming. <laughs> Tomorrow's coming. The next days are coming. You have to get ready. Now, me and my wife, we're OCD. We're perfectionists. And, uh, and I, I'm a full perfectionist. She's a high perfectionist. When I get ready to go to bed at night, I get all my clothes ready for the next day. I don't want to wake her up and bother her. I'm like a rat. I just ease out of bed and ease down through there. And she don't even never know I'm awake. I'll never know I'm up. She'll say, what? She, she gets up, she says, what time did you get up? I, I just ease out of her. I, I, take, I take my clothes to the living room. I put my clothes, my shoes, and everything I'm going to wear for the next day. And I'm preparing for the next day. If I got things to do, bills to pay, running to do. When we go to the meeting, get back home, we got certain things we got to do. You know what? I got it all lined up. I got it all wrote down. I got it all lined up. I got to get this done, got that done. You know what I'm doing? I'm preparing for tomorrow. I'm making plans for tomorrow. I'm going to make sure, my friend, I'm prepared. You know, live, you know, that old saying is, live today, tomorrow will take care of itself. Well, you can have that if you want to, but tomorrow's coming. <laughs> Death don't come, Jesus don't come. Guess what? You're going to have her tomorrow. Amen. My friend, they say, live today, and tomorrow may never come, but it will come, and it may come. You ought to prepare for tomorrow. Amen. My friend, listen. My friend, it may come. Somebody said, it, 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 it won't, but it may. Uh, you know, when I was a young preacher, everybody said, uh, don't worry about it. Jesus is coming. Well, well that's been 60-something years, and he ain't got here yet. I'm glad I didn't sit around and fold my hands. <laughs> Say, well, Jesus is coming. Amen. I do read that message over there where he said, occupy till I come. I got parks and my doctor said, don't go home. Do not go. I, I can see her now. She got right in my face. And she looked at me. She said, preacher. I told her, I said, give me some advice about this park. This is new. And I knew what she got right in my face, Jordan. I mean, she wasn't that far in my face. And she said, don't go home and sit down. Keep moving. Keep going. Keep doing. If you're preaching, keep preaching. Keep going. Keep doing. And by God's grace, I have. And I believe it's helped me to keep on going. Amen. We've got to prepare for tomorrow and face tomorrow, my friend, because, my friend, tomorrow comes. He said in that verse, he said, make me. And then he said, he, in this verse, he said, make me. That's future. Uh, he said, I have yesterday. I will today. Then he says, make me tomorrow. Make me one of thy hired servants. He was getting ready for tomorrow. Loading up for tomorrow. My wife, when we, we're at home, when we're at home, she'll say, uh, uh, what do you want for supper tomorrow? I mean, while we're eating supper. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard to say what you want tomorrow when you're filling up on what you got today. And she'll say, what do you want tomorrow? I need to lay something out. Or if we're going to go out, that's fine. Or if we're going to fix something here, I've got to make plans for it. And I said, well, what about so-and-so? And she'll say, well, you'll have to go to the store and get the stuff. I didn't want to go to the store and get the stuff. <laughs> but she prepared. She, she got that prepared for tomorrow. My mother was like that. She had, a, she had a list and she was planning for her tomorrows and what she was going to eat and what she was going to do. You know what? What are plan for tomorrow? Right. Or to prepare ourselves for tomorrow. Amen. My friend, listen. Tomorrow speaks. It sometimes, it sometimes uh, we should prepare for it physically. Yeah. Tomorrow. I mean, when I was a young preacher, I just, Brother Sidney, I just run and hoop and holler and stomp and spit. And I, I've preached the first, uh, Brother Rocky, two or three times, I'd brought straight up in there and land on top of it. That's a whole lot of pounds ago and a whole lot of years ago. 
when I landed right on top of the pulpit, I'd do that. Preach, it's crazy stuff. I don't know why you do that. I, one fellow said, why you do all that stuff? And he said, why you hack? I said, hack because I like to hack. And I jump because I want to jump. I said, you get up here and get excited as I do, you jump a little bit. He said, oh, physically. Everybody said, hello. I said, oh, shoot, I'm just going to run around and wire out. I said, don't matter to me. I'm just going to shout her out to Jesus guy. Well, I don't put, I don't jump near as high <laughs> as I used to. <laughs> and when I get through preaching, I'm looking for a nap. <laughs> Amen. I'm, old, I'm serious. I'm looking for a nap. The one preacher I was preaching morning and night, I said, if you want me to preach morning and night, I'll preach in the morning, nap in the evening, and see you tonight. I said, it's just the way it is. I said, I'm old. I got, I got all this stuff. And you know what? You have to prepare for that stuff. And physically, spiritually, spiritually. You ought to prepare yourself for tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. That's why you ought to pray today. That's why you ought to study today. That's why you ought to listen to tapes today. That's why you ought to encourage yourself today and build yourself up on the most holy faith because you don't know what's coming tomorrow. The devil could throw you a curve tomorrow and knock the props out from you if you ain't prepared for it. Amen? Financially, we ought to prepare for tomorrow. I'm going to tell you, young folks, I think we ought to have a seminar sometime on these young folks. You can't get paid on Friday and, and borrow money to get to work on Monday. Yeah, right. Huh? Some of these young folks, ever, ever, every time they get a check, they think they got to go buy new clothes and blow everything every dime they got. And they got more clothes than they can wear. Right. Say amen, Sandy. Amen. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I pick on Sandy, but we got more clothes. I remember the day Brother Doug had one sport coat. <laughs> Preacher meeting, I'd wear it every night, same sport coat. Had two shirts, Kate washed one, and I'd wear the other. <laughs> she had one dress, it had a little hole in it, she wore a coat over top of it. <laughs> that old fit six forward, we'd run up down the road, had a glass pack, we'd roll in them church. Bow, blah, 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 that's it, Brother Mike's here. <laughs> we'd go in there and just preach and shout. And, uh, now we go to the closet and wonder which one we're going to wear. Right. Spending everything. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. Take advice, Brother Sandy. Take advice. I'm not preaching to you, but I just have to say your name. Anybody, anyway, take advice. You better, you better lay up something for tomorrow. Because right. right. you think you can live on Social Security, you're crazy. Right. And some of you kids like this, when, when y'all get at my age, you probably won't even have Social Security. Amen? Right. Like, I mean, you better lay up something. Come on now, help me out. Because right. right. the old age is coming. Tomorrow's coming. Yeah. And physically and spiritually, you ought to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for tomorrow because it's going to come. And I thought about this. My friend, it's something we should look forward to. Look forward to tomorrow. In many cases, at the age now, we look forward every day we get up. We, get, we, we spend our mornings together. Drink coffee. We're coffee drinkers. I don't know if it's good for you, bad for you, but I'll probably drink it till Jesus comes. Amen. I hope we have some in heaven. Amen. That'd go good with bread and fish, wouldn't it? Amen. But, uh, you know, we get up and spend that time together. Yeah. You know what? You ought, you, ought to, you ought to prepare for tomorrow to spend some time with your family because it's going to be gone. Right. Yeah. Right. I thought my boys were going to be with me forever and they're, they're gone. I thought my grandkids would be with me forever and they're gone. <laughs> we find ourselves sitting alone sometimes, wondering where they're all at. <laughs> But you know what you ought, to, you ought to plan for tomorrow is on purpose to spend time with your family. Amen. I think God expects that. I run up down the road for 15 years. but Doug knows this. And booked every week. I was booked three years ahead of time. I mean, I'd, I'd get a Thursday or Friday off and somebody would take it. Run up down the road and Brother Doug one day it hit me. My, my youngest son was 10 years old. I'd been gone on the road living in motels. I didn't even have a closet in the house. All my clothes was in the van. When I went home, stayed home, had to, I, I had to, they had to, we had to fix a closet to put my stuff in. And I looked at my little old boy, 10 years old, and I said, son, I'm sorry. I messed up. I should not have been gone all them days. God didn't give them you to me for your mama to raise. Right. Huh? They'll be gone on these days. Right. Amen. Circumstances to change. And you better, you better enjoy today with your family while you can. That God made that family. Yes. Amen. Come on now, help me out. You ought to make sure that you plan. I afraid to have some time. Have time with your children, time with your companions, time with your friends. Amen. And my friend, listen, it's something we can trust God with. Right. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on you understand all your ways acknowledge Him. He'll direct your paths. It's something you can trust God with. It's something, my friend, you should think about today. You ought to think about tomorrow. Amen. You ought to think about tomorrow. Well, listen, we cannot remedy or change the past. We can take advantage of the day and we can prayer for the future. Oh, the Rocky runs that place over there. That's not a, I know, in, in certain essence, it's, it, Brother Rocky, it is a day by day. And when we go over there, you know, it's a day by day thing. Days is going on. But I guarantee you, Sister Rocky, she's got plans for tomorrow and the next day and plans for feeding them men and plans for this and plans for that. You know what? It's coming. It's coming. And if Jesus don't come, guess what? Tomorrow's coming. Amen. Tomorrow is coming. You know, boast not thyself of tomorrow. Thou know it's not what a day may bring forth. But you can be ready for tomorrow. You can be ready. Amen. You can be ready. The prodigal son didn't like his yesterday. He came to himself today. He changed his future. He come in with, he come in with rags and hog clothes. But it wasn't long that he had a robe and shoes. <laughs> Food on the table. Love of the Father. Sure. He changed it all. You know why? He, he came to himself. Yeah. Let me just dwell on that just a second. He came to himself. You know what's wrong? Some people, they never came to themselves. I realized a long time ago, it ain't about me. Don't you get sick of these people? So and so, evangelistic association. My ministry, my tent, my seminar, my convention, my money I'm going home with. There ain't no goods and evangelists association. It's all Lord's. I don't, I don't even, I've, I've never asked nobody to let me preach. I just lay that book out there every day and say, Lord, there it is. You, you book it. You fill it up. If you want me to stay home, I'll stay home. If you want me to go, you, you take care of that. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Oh, listen, ain't you sick of that stuff? I'm, about, I'm gonna mess up and ruin your dinner. I'm about, I'm about sick of these meetings that they have, and they don't want to identify with the church. And every time you take your young people down there, they all get saved. You baptize them three times in one year. Every time they go to the camp meeting, every time they go to their little ministry, they all get saved again. Church I left, they took them, to, they took them, I started, I started saying name, I better not say that. They took them to the camp meeting three times. Guess what? Got saved three times one year. The stupid pastor baptized them three times one year. And guess what? He left, the next pastor took them, they got saved again. They've been saved four times. I got saved one time, that's been good ever since. I tell you what, my friend, we need, we need to get back to this thing. It's God. It's God. Amen. If God don't do it, Oh, hey, hey, hey. yesterday we didn't have to have all this stuff. No, sir. I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm just going to talk. Can I talk a minute out of my heart? You know, sometimes we think we got to have all this stuff, huh? Got to have all this stuff. Me and my boy, we we fished together and hunt together. We rode horses together. We had horses for years. We rode horses together. I mean, it was, just, it was just like that. He a while back, Brother Doug, I called him. I said, what are you doing? It's about 7 o'clock at night. He said, I ain't doing nothing. What are you doing? I said, you want to go to McDonald's? I'll meet you at McDonald's. We'll get coffee. He drinks coffee like me. He said, yeah, I'll meet you over. We went over to McDonald's, and we sat there till it closed. Wow. Just turned and talked. We didn't jump up and down, turn flips. <laughs> we didn't raise no money. And the people at McDonald, we didn't do it. We just sat there and talked. But Doug, we started out. I got near to the truck. He said, hey, Dad. He come on up my neck. He said, Dad, we've had a lot of good times. He said, I believe this is one of the best times I ever had. But all we done just sit and talked. Fellowship. Didn't have to have entertainment. We didn't have to have nothing. I'm going to tell you the whole thing we need in the church is God. You don't have to all that stuff. You get God in people's life, they'll, they'll, they'll straighten up. They'll change their life. You say, well, what? Yeah, it ain't working. All this entertainment and all this stuff are done. 
Got to go do this. Got to go do that. Got to take them do this and do all that. If you got to do a lot to keep them, God ain't got them yet. When God say, "May I went to the WMU meeting. I thought they said they announced it at church. I went. Didn't know it was for women. They just said having something at the church. I got saved. I went. My mother said, you can't come in here. It's just for women. I said, all I know is that now something's going on at the church. I tell you, it, we need the Lord. We, hey, yesterday worked. I'm old enough to tell you, yesterday worked. Today ain't working. You say, how you know it ain't working, preacher? Because people have revival. And two weeks later, they, <laughs> they need another one. Huh? Come on now, help me out. Come in here and hoop and holler and shout and carry on today and tomorrow. Hey, we need something, preacher. Have something else. Didn't last a week. I mean, when the revivals used to last a while. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Blame Brother Doug. He's the one put me up here. Amen. Uh, yesterday's gone. Forget it. Learn from it. Learn from it. Today's here. Take advantage of it. Amen. Tomorrow's coming. You better prepare for it. You better get ready for it because it's coming. Tomorrow with your kids. Tomorrow's coming when your kids, when they leave the nest. Oh, that's tough, ain't it? Problems is going to come. Troubles is going to come. You better prepare yourself spiritually for tomorrow. Because uh, the devil could attack you tomorrow like he ain't never attacked you. Hmm? I pray every day. I pray every day. This is my church, and I love this church, and I love Brother Doug and Sister Nett, and I know them when they're single. And been with them all the way through. Makes me feel old when I see all these kids and Christians married. Every time I look at him, I thought, man, go away. Amen. <laughs> He's married now, and I'm old. But I, t I tell you what, I do pray for Brother Doug. Pray God bless this I remember the yesterdays back then. Yes, sir. Remember those hard days, Brother Doug. Yes, sir. We laid and prayed and cried that God would move and do a work. He's built a work. <laughs> and this place is known all over the country. Yeah. All over the country. Yeah. Say something, Kentucky. Oh, you're talking about Emmanuel Baptist yeah. Church, Kentucky. I say, yeah. Amen. What church you work out of? Emmanuel Baptist yes, Church. Right. Who's your pastor? Doug Foster, his good wife of that. And by the way, by the way, I've got to quit. I love Brother Doug and Sister Nett, but I'm going to tell you what, church folks, God just wants to say hello to y'all this morning. God just wants to say hello. Y'all work and labor and toil and finance and push and give, work in the church. I just want to say hello from God. He loves you. Appreciate you. Those behind the scene things that you do, that give it. Somebody said, Oh, Brother Doug, give some money away. And I, I, I'm glad he does. But it comes from y'all. I just want to tell y'all hello. <laughs> All you workers back there in the kitchen today, I just want to tell you, God said hello. <laughs> I'm through. I ain't through, but Doug. Do you struggle to find good Bible based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.